Welcome, Mr. President. Mr. President, we are so honored to welcome you to our iconic and historic Colorado landscape. I know you got to see some of our changing leaves on the ride up. This is a special site. This is a site that commemorates our military heritage, uh, the, the brave uh, ski troopers and 10th Mountain Division veterans in World War II, and of course, part of the natural backdrop of what makes Colorado special. I wanna thank Senator Bennett, Senator Hickenlooper, Representative Nagus, Secretary Vilsack. We have Brigadier General Laura Clellan with us, the Adjutant General of Colorado and head of our Department of Veterans Affairs, Dan Gibbs, the head of our Department of Natural Resources. You know, protecting Camp Hale, the hallowed training ground, the birthplace of the 10th Mountain Division, celebrates Colorado's contributions to the World War II effort and of course the service of our proud ski troopers. Veterans of the 10th Mountain Division helped shape the modern ski industry, leading to Colorado's rise as a world-class outdoor recreation community, preserving our beautiful natural treasure. Upon returning from World War II, so many members of the 10th Mountain Division went on to help found ski resorts like Vail and Aspen and Keystone to serve as ski instructors, to form ski magazines and outdoor companies, to go on to pay forward the way that we all enjoy our beautiful, great outdoors. And to this day, the areas around Camp Hale are home to world-class backcountry skiing, mountain biking, backpacking, whitewater rafting, and so many other adventurous pursuits that translate into fun and, of course, jobs for our local economy. You know, when I served in the United States Congress, I was so proud to introduce the first bill to protect many of the areas being designated today and to champion the Continental Divide, Recreation, Wilderness, and Camp Hale Legacy Act with Senator Bennett, who's been an incredible champion of the CORE Act. And of course, we applaud Representative Nagus's efforts in getting the CORE Act passed in the House of Representatives. <laughs> you know, our national monument system in many ways was born in Colorado with the fight to protect Mesa Verde in Southwest Colorado, and today's designation really provides and establishes that link between our lands, our history, and our future as Westerners. We've been proud to work hard to protect and enhance the Colorado way of life and our great outdoors. And it's essential to protect Colorado's outdoors, commemorating our historic contributions of our veterans to our country, our democracy, uh, and our way of life. You know. I wanna thank our federal partners for those here to celebrate this. I'm thrilled that by working with the U.S. Forest Service, we're joined by Scott Fitzwilliams, our efforts to protect key areas in the broader Camp Hill landscape are coming to fruition. Uh, as we realize the longstanding fight to celebrate Colorado's history and protect our future. I'm, I know we have with us, joining us for the signing will be some uh, veterans of the 10th Mountain Division but I remembered, reminded of some words shared with me uh, by Sandy Treat. Many of you knew him, a 10th Mountain Division veteran. Uh, uh, lost him in the last couple of years, but active in the early days of forming this. And many of you know him at the Vail Ski Museum. He volunteered every Friday uh, talking about the history of the ski industry. Uh, Sandy challenged us uh, when he was with us to get her done. And today, Mr. President, you're gonna get her done. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a wonderful relationship with our President's Secretary of Agriculture, uh, uh, who works hard with White River and uh, has worked hard to advise the President on moving forward with the Camp Hale designation. It's my honor to introduce Secretary Tom Vilsack. Thank you. Governor, thank you very, very much. Uh, folks, it's an honor to return to such a special ground. To be here both in August and again with you today is such a privilege. You know, the Forest Service, as you know, manages a phenomenal system of the National Forest that cover 193 million acres from New England to Florida, from Colorado to Oregon to Alaska. Our forests have rich histories. They provide recreational opportunities for tens of millions of people and, of course, protect our water and provide valuable resources for our daily lives. Our National Forests are vital parts of this nation's fabric 
and they each tell their own story. And certainly Camp Hale is no exception. It is a storied place. When I was here in August, I heard from folks in the area who wanted this area protected to honor the contributions of the 10th Mountain Division veterans while also fostering a vibrant outdoor economy. From snowmobilers and world-class ski resorts to anglers and hunters and local guides who make their living here amongst this great national forest. Our team has learned a lot about the first stewards of this region, the Ute, and who today continue to have important knowledge and perspective to offer all of which makes us stronger as a nation. We're committed today to continuing to defend what makes this landscape so worthy of a national monument, as well as ensuring continued recreational access, promoting its history, and managing the lands in the face of climate change. The Biden-Harris administration and USDA are proud to continue to work with this great community to steward this land in ways that will help the region thrive. It is places like these, with these inspiring vistas and important contributions that make this land and our nation so special. In addition to the designation of Camp Hill Continental Divide National Monument, USDA is also working with Senator, uh, Secretary Heelan and the Department of Interior to initiate a conversation and consideration of a 20-year withdrawal in the Thompson Divide area from mining. This This would temporarily prohibit the issuance of new uh, prospecting permits and leases from federal minerals and the staking of new mineral claims and mining claims, during which we will do a careful environmental analysis with much public input. This withdrawal action has been initiated in response to broad concerns expressed by stakeholders that uh, the permits and leases could have a negative impact here in the Thompson Divide on wildlife, habitat, recreational opportunities, grazing lands, and of course, protecting our clean water and air, all of which, as the governor says, is essential to the economy here. This is a pause pending public input and is one that does not affect existing rights or private land. On behalf of USDA, I want to express my gratitude to Senator Bennett, Senator Hickenlooper, Representative Goose, Governor Polis, and the many, many stakeholders who have provided years of steadfast advocacy on behalf of these landscapes. But I really want to especially thank my boss, the President of the United States, President Biden. <laughs> Mr. President, I don't know since Teddy Roosevelt that we've had a, we've had a president so supportive of our Forest Service and its wildfire firefighters, and I want to thank you personally, sir, for the incredible work you did. <laughs> and speaking of our Forest Service employees, none of this would be possible without their tireless effort. Uh, particularly Scott Fitzwilliams and Steve Lohr of the U.S. Forest Service who worked tirelessly over the past several months to make today's designation a reality. Your Forest Service employees are the reason this landscape is managed with such expertise and care. And as I look over this land today, I know that it is in good hands because all of you, the stories of Camp Hell and the surrounding areas, will be protected for generations to come. And now it's my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, one of the great uh, uh, leaders of the Iowa House of Representatives, Congressman DeGoose. <laughs> Let's give another round of applause to the Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Thank you, Secretary Vilsack, uh, of course, to Governor Polis, uh, to my two colleagues in the United States Senate, Senator uh, uh, Bennett and Senator Hickenlooper, and to President Joe Biden. Let me just say this. It is truly historic, truly special, for this president to have designated Camp Hale Continental Divide as America's newest national monument and to make the decision to do it here in this treasured landscape. Mr. President, we thank you. Eagle County, you can do better than that. Let's give a round of applause to the President of the United States. I, I could not be more thrilled to be here today on this historic day. We know that it would not be possible were it not for the tireless advocacy of the veterans of the 10th Mountain Division. Uh, there are many of whom are here today, their families. You heard the governor talk about uh, one in particular veteran who's no longer with us, uh, Sandy Treat. I believe Sandy Treat Jr. is here. If, if he is, I hope he'll stand, he'll raise his hand. Take a stand, Sandy Treat Jr. When I, when I first been, began serving in Congress, I had the special opportunity 
to tour these grounds with Sandy, a World War II veteran who trained at Camp Hale and spent his final years working to preserve this land. And Sandy once wrote, I grew up in America, in an America rather, that valued our wild lands. And this is a value that I hope lives on long after I'm gone. Today, we made good. The president made good. Senator Bennett and Senator Hickenlooper and Governor Polis made good on the promise to Sandy that this land is valued and the service of the 10th Mountain Division will never, never be forgotten. I am so proud that after championing the protection of this area with Senator Bennett, who has been tireless for a decade working to get this done, that we can now honor the legacy of Sandy and the 10th Mountain Division, and that this will now be a reality. And, and finally, let me just say a special thank you to all of you who are gathered here today. Mr. President, before you, you have hundreds of county commissioners, of local ranchers, of conservationists, of veterans, of folks who treasure our public lands, who have spent a great deal of time and effort making this possible, beating the drum month after month, year after year, decade after decade. We are in your debt. We thank you, and we thank you, Mr. President. Today is indeed a special day. With that, I hope you'll join me in giving a warm applause to someone who needs no introduction. He, of course, is our former governor, with whom I had the pleasure of working for years ago, and now is our state's junior senator, uh, but, uh, but is doing one heck of a job in the United States Senate. Let's give it up for Senator John Hickenlooper. And I'm so close to the main attractions that I'm going to be very brief, but I want to recognize, I want to recognize Joe Neguse, and as always, he kind of hit the nail on the head. There can be no greater privilege than to have a mentor who's 10 years younger than you are, <laughs> such as Michael Bennett. I mean, uh, oh, there he is. He's like, I'm not saying he's not a little sneaky in terms of his geography sometimes. I was enlisted back when I was governor. Michael Bennett came to me and, and started talking to me about the CORE Act and how relentless the whole community had been. And it was bipartisan. We had Republican commissioners, Democrat commissioners. We had people from all walks of life that were unified that these lands should be protected. And that we got a hearing in the Natural Resources Committee in the Senate that CORE Act is not going anywhere. We're going to get it done in this coming year. But again, I give Michael the great credit to say, all right, well, if we're not going to get it done in the near term, when time is of the essence, where people and, and, and their families have been working so long to make this happen, to make this Continental Divide National Monument a reality, well, then why wait? Why don't we recognize that we can protect this land by making it a monument, uh, by making it a reality, and allow us to, to move forward and have an event like this? And Secretary Vilsack, who certainly is one of the hardest workers, hardest working cabinet members I've ever known uh, in, in for two presidents, not just one, but for two presidents. And he hit it the other nail on the head. I think we've recognized that that President Biden, uh, really alone since since Teddy Roosevelt, has come to the West and spent time in the West and recognized that there, we are unique and special out here and deserve that attention. And we appreciate it. So now I think I've thanked almost everybody, but I haven't thanked all the staff of Senator Bennett. Uh, I did not thank Governor Polis. I should, uh, I should mention that as one governor to the next, you're no, no greater benefit can you have in life than to have the next governor come along and be better than you were. And that is a gift, because he covers up all the mistakes you made by doing so many good things in his own right. Anyway, his staff, I want to recognize Governor Polis' staff. I want to recognize Senator Bennett's staff, uh, Secretary Vilsack's staff, all of the Forest Service people, but especially the staff of the White House who worked so hard to make this as well a, a reality as well. And thank you all, all of you who really made it happen. Thank you. All right. Now, now I have thanked everybody, and I will uh, ignore any speeches that they may have written for me and introduce someone who needs no introduction, intro, introduction truly needs no introduction, uh, someone who's been working on, on these lands and this vision for, for more than a decade your senior senator from Colorado, Michael Bennett. Thank you. Well, good, what's up? good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is a, a historic day for Colorado, and I want to thank Senator Hickenlooper and Governor Polis, Congressman Neguse, 
Secretary Vilsack, thank you for coming back again and again and again. And, and I also would like you to give a round of applause to my staff, too, for the work that they've done over the years for this. And so many of you that are here for your leadership, making it possible. And Mr. President, welcome to Camp Pale. Welcome to Colorado. If I do say so myself, and perhaps speaking for myself, you have excellent taste, Mr. President, for your administration's first national monument designation. Your, your designation means more Americans will come to appreciate the extraordinary history of this place, a history that goes back to before when Colorado was a state. According to you people, their ancestors lived here since the beginning of time. The Ute came to this place each year after the winter snow melted to hunt and gather plants for food and medicine. This designation honors their enduring connection to the land and their rightful role to help manage it. It also honors the singular legacy, as we've heard of the 10th Mountain Division. A number of years ago, I came here to learn from 10th Mountain veterans about their experiences at Camp Hale. They joined 15,000 recruits who arrived here by train starting in 1942, not just from Colorado, but all across the country. Some had never seen snow before. Others had never been in the mountains, but among them were the best skiers and mountaineers and mountain climbers in America, and they learned from each other. Over the next two years, they trained relentlessly in 10 feet, 10 feet of snow and temperatures 50 degrees below zero. Two days ago, Mr. President, the son of a 10th mountain vet told me his dad said this mountain was the coldest son of a bitch he ever climbed. The conditions were so tough, some called it Camp Hell, but it forged them into the world's most capable mountain soldiers, and they were just in time. By early 1945, the Allies had hit a wall in northern Italy where German soldiers held the high ground in the Apennine Mountains. Every Allied effort to break the German line had failed until the 10th Mountain Division arrived at Riva Ridge, 10th Mountain soldiers climbed more than 1,800 feet straight up a vertical cliff with 90-pound packs and rifles in the dead of night. At dawn, they surprised the Germans who believed their position was unassailable, not for the 10th Mountain Division. They seized it. They scaled Mount Belvedere and punched a hole in the German line. And over the next 10 weeks, they pushed north with the Allies and helped clear the way for victory in Europe. All of this came at a terrible cost. Over 114 days of combat, more than 4,000 soldiers were wounded, nearly 1,000 lost their lives. And as was mentioned, they weren't done yet. After the war, a number of 10th Mountain veterans returned to Colorado to build our ski and outdoor industries. Theirs is an extraordinary story. A deeply Colorado story, I think, Mr. President, of service, of vision, entrepreneurship, and of abiding connection to the outdoors and our public land. And generations later, young veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan took up the fight to memorialize what the 10th Mountain Division did here. I remember sitting with them just up the road in Leadville, one after another of these young veterans told me about the power of these mountains and our public lands and this place to help heal their own wounds of war more than any medication or any treatment and to find connection not only to nature but to the legacy of the 10th Mountain Division. Those veterans joined so many Coloradans who spent years working to protect this special place. Many are here today, Mr. President, local officials, sportsmen, environmental groups, and many others. This proclamation reflects their vision and their compromises hammered out over literally hundreds of meetings year after year. And the result is a victory for Colorado's environment, our $10 billion outdoor recreation economy, and the legacy of public lands we owe the next generation, a legacy we burnished over the past 10 years in our state, protecting places like Hermosa Creek and Chimney Rock 
and Browns Canyon working with so many of you here. Let me end by acknowledging those who are no longer here, the 10th Mountain veterans who gave their lives in the war or who have passed on since. With this de designation, Mr. President, you offer their service the dignity of public remembrance. You safeguard this place and its history, not only for them, but for America. And you ensure that years from now, we can bring our grandkids here and tell them the story of the 10th Mountain Division and their contributions not only to Colorado, but to humanity. And for that, Mr. Pe President, Colorado will be forever grateful. Thank you. And now it's my honor to introduce uh, uh, a, a great friend and a great partner, Scott Fitzwilliams, the forest supervisor of the White River National Forest. I think he's the hardest working person in show business. Thank you. Thank you. Just you and I know. Thank you, Senator. Um, you know, I grew up in, in the heartland of the farmlands of Wisconsin. My dad was a cop. My mom was uh, taking care of me and my five siblings chasing us around the house. Grow Growing up, life was about sports, camping, fishing, hiking. For us, the outdoors meant everything. But I didn't know I could, could make a career out of it until I came here to Colorado for graduate school and earned my master's degree in environmental policy. It was there I got an internship with the Forest Service, and I just loved it. So I joined on full time. And for the next 31 years, I got to serve in some of the most amazing, stunning places in America, Alaska, Wyoming, Oregon, Montana, and North Dakota. And then in late 2009, I came back here to Colorado. And for the last 13 years, I've been the forest supervisor of this incredible place and the two and a half million acre White River National Forest. For me and my awesome team, our job is to protect the lands for future generations, so that our forests can provide what Americans really want. Clean water, clean air, wildlife, recreation, and, and economic opportunities. It's getting windy. I've considered other positions elsewhere, but I've stayed here because I love this land and I love the people in it. You can feel the energy of these communities. We've all been bonded and shared love and respect for the forests around us, and they provide us nourishment, both physical and spiritual. You know, at the end of a stressful week, I can go fishing, hiking, skiing, backpacking, hunting. It's like nowhere else on earth, and it inspires me every day. These landscapes have been telling us stories for a long time, stories that I, learn, I continue to learn from our tribal elders and that I'll pass on to my son. Designating Camp Hale and the surrounding landscape as a national monument marks the next chapter in our story. And so I am honored to, to introduce the man that who has made it all possible, the leader on climate we can trust, the president who believes in the story of our nation, the story of America the beautiful. Please welcome President Joe Biden. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. This one working? Hello, hello, hello. Not working, is it? It is, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, well, by the way, I, uh, I wanted to come out here because I love being in Colorado. I love being in the West. I love even being in Alaska. One of the things I was saying earlier to some of the folks that we came over with is that uh, one of the great treasures we have our national forests, our national parks. And uh, from the time my kids were old enough to uh, travel with me, I've taken them to most, almost every national park in the country, down the Colorado, down the Snake River, or just everywhere, because I wanted them to see. I wanted them to see what so many people don't get to see. But folks, I want to thank Scott for the introduction and mostly for his service. You're right, this is the story of America the Beautiful. The way you talk about being a forest ranger is uh, just, uh, you just can feel the power in this place when you talk about it. 
And as you just heard, uh, you have the same way of these incredible leaders around you thanking you. Governor Polis, he, uh, Joe, uh, Joe, uh, I tell you what, uh, I didn't know that uh, former governor had worked for you. Um, but uh, Joe from the House and John and Michael, all of you have been determined over the years to protect this sacred and historic lands. And Michael came over here. Uh, uh, I'm on, I want Michael to come back up here a second. Come on, Michael. And the reason why I do, I want you to tell you what happened here. Uh, this guy, he made this finally happen, at least me signing this shortly. And I, uh, he came to the White House and uh, he said, uh, I, I told you what I need. <laughs> and I said, I'll do it. You know why? I was worried he'd never leave the damn White House if he didn't go. <laughs> And I'm also honored to be joined by several tribal leaders here, because this is your progeny, this, this magnificent land. You've been great stewards of these sacred lands. But I just want you to know, the reason why he's an environmentalist, he married one. Otherwise, he'd sleep alone. So I just want you to know that. Look, it's great to be with Tom Vilsack, Secretary of Agriculture, Brenda Malloy, a chair of our Council of Environmental Quality. And while she couldn't be here today, I especially want to thank our first Native American, who is a cabinet member, Deb Holland, who is the interior, Secretary of Interior. <laughs> Folks, as I said, when I served as Senator and Vice President, Jill and I made sure to take our children and grandchildren to national parks all around the country. There are treasures and wonders that define the identity of us as a nation. There are birthright that we pass down from generation to generation, and they unite us. And that's what today is all about. We're doing it not just for today, but for all the ages. And it's for the people of Colorado, but it also goes well beyond the people of Colorado. It's for all the people across America and the world. It's a permanent, permanent decision an action that no future president can overturn. In 1906, <laughs> President Theodore Roosevelt first used the Antiquities Act to designate a national monument. He essentially invented the national parks. Since then, presidents of both parties have used the Antiquities Act to preserve America's natural treasures from the Grand Canyon to the Statue of Liberty, to Colorado's canyons of the, of the ancients. Today, we're off the authorities under the Antiquities Act. I'm establishing Camp Hale Continental Divide National Monument today. <laughs> it's the first new national monument of my presidency under this authority. When you think about the national beauty of Colorado and the history of our nation, you find it here. More than 50,000 acres, including the 10-mile range, soaring peaks and steep canyons, Black bears, bald eagles, moose, mountain lions, waterfalls, pristine rivers, alpine lakes, a scant and the scent of wildflowers at the right time of the year, and a stunning backdrop of ski slopes and iconic trails. These treasured lands tell the story of America. For thousands of years, tribal nations have been stewards of this sacred land, hunting game, foraging for medicinal plants, and maintaining a deep spiritual bond with the land itself. But by the 1800s, mining activity and federal government drove out indigenous tribes from their homes. But those tribes continued to use these sacred lands. Last year, I issued a historic proclamation officially designating Indigenous Peoples Day to honor the contributions of Native Americans <laughs> to our society and acknowledge, acknowledge the history of violence committed against them. Two days ago, we observed that day in this nation. Today, I'll be signing a proclamation to preserve these sacred tribal grounds as a national monument. It was also where the U.S. Army, as you've already heard, first and only mountain infantry division trained to take on the Nazis in World War II. The 10th Mountain Division stationed on the valley floor surrounded by rugged boulders, forest, mountains stretching 14 feet high, 14,000 feet high, among the tallest mountains in America, facing high altitudes and harsh terrain, deep snow, bitter cold. Soldiers of campaign learned to scale rock, ski, and survive, preparing for the war they were about to fight. The pivotal moment came 
as the senator pointed out in February 1945. Surprise Allied attack in the mountains in Italy. Imagine. It's pitch black, punishing cold. The mission high in the mountains that hinged on the skill, strength, and stamina that could have only been gained in a place like this. They're more than ready. They were more than ready that day and since then. American soldiers of the 10th Mountain Division scaled that 1,800-foot cliff at night, caught the Germans by surprise, captured, captured key positions, and broke through the German defense line at a pivotal point in the war. Just imagine, I mean this sincerely, I say this as a father of a man who won the Bronze Star, the Conspicuous Service Medal, and lost his life in Iraq. Imagine the courage, the daring, and the genuine sacrifice, genuine sacrifice they all made. After the war ended, Camp Hell became the hub for innovation and in winter warfare. And even when it closed in 1965, many veterans returned to the area. Some became scientists who studied rock glaciers, endangered animals, and wetland forests. Many returned to heal their wounds, both visible and invisible, seeking the solace and sovereign and serenity in ways that only nature can do. Other veterans returned to build world-famous ski resorts, as you all know and outdoor recreational industries to define Colorado today. Industries support millions of American jobs, generating hundreds of billions of dollars for our economy, and provide countless, countless memories for families. I taught my boys to ski here. I taught my family to ski here. I, uh, it's, and by the way, as you all know, especially for us Easterners, we talk about that at dinner. We talk, no, I'm serious. All those memories. All those memories that you all understandably take for granted, they're a big deal where I come from. Today, as Commander-in-Chief, it's a true honor to be joined by two of the few surviving veterans of the original 10th Mountain Division. Francis Lovett. Francis, where is Francis? He's going to come up later. Francis, as my mother would say, God love you, man. God love you. Hundred years young, enlisted in the Army at age 20, stationed at Camp Hale, fought overseas, earned two bronze stars, and among many other medals, a war hero who came home to become a teacher and a principal. Thank you, Francis, for your service to our country and all you've done to get this monument designated. Thank you. He's also joined by another 10th Mountain Division man, a guy named Robert Scheuer. 99 years young, trained at this camp, served his country before joining his dad's business just a few years ago. He came back to Colorado to be with his family. Robert, thank you for your service. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm honored, I'm honored to sign this proclamation to preserve the special part of our military history. In addition, Secretary Vilsack just explain, explained, today my administration is announcing steps to conserve the Thompson Divide, another 225,000 acres, 60 miles from here. It's another congressional priority for Michael, John, and Joe. We're standing with Colorado's farmers, ranchers, hunters, anglers, who have forged generations to protect, protect beautiful streams, Aspen Groves, and the Thompson Divide area. But let me be clear. There's no current or planned oil exploration production in the area. We're just keeping things as they've been for a long time for the next 20 years while we study, for the next years, while we study whether we can get this done. In my first year in office, I protected more lands and waters than any American president since John Kennedy. After the previous administration, <laughs> after the previous administration, Roll back protections, I restored full protection to three national monuments in Utah and New England. And I signed and designated the Imachi Japanese inc incarceration camp of World War II as a national historic site in southeastern Colorado. We purchased additional land at Sand, at Sand Creek Massacre site outside of, uh, outside of Denver. And we did, and by the way, I'm not sure I would have understood how important this was has I not gotten to see these, see these parks until I understood the breathtaking nature of it. 
to stand there on the edge of a cliff in the Rio Grande to, you know, looking at one thing, and it's just there's not many cliffs, but then head up to the, uh, the Grand Canyon. It's a cathedral. It, I mean, it takes your breath away. I've climbed it from the river up, and I've looked at it from the, uh, from the top down. It's, it's breathtaking. And I don't think till you see some of these things do you understand why it was so important to continue to preserve. And with the help of a member of Congress here today, I signed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act that constitute the largest investment in climate ever in history, the history of the world. We're investing billions of dollars to protect our iconic outdoors, preserve our historic sites, and address the devastating influx of climate change. It includes historic funding for farmers and communities in the upper and lower Colorado River Basin so they can conserve water during the droughts. It includes historic investments in communities across Colorado to recover and build from devastating wildfires. And by the way, to all the Forest Service and the firefighters, we owe you big. I've traveled just in the last two years over every major wildfire in America in a helicopter. You realize more land has burned to the ground than occupies the entire state of New Jersey, the entire state of New Jersey, from New Mexico to Washington State to Idaho, across the, the entire West. It's devastating. And there's so much we, more we have to do. There's more that, that we have to do that really matters. Let me close with this. Edward Abbey, a writer who once worked as a ranger in the Arches National Park in Utah, wrote, and I quote, there are many such places. Every man, every woman carries in his heart and mind the image of the ideal place, the right place, the one true home, known or unknown, actual or visionary. We're just such a place here today. And thanks to Michael Bennett, I now ask everyone who has worked so hard to help make this happen to be join me as we sign this official proclamation declaring Camp Hill Continental Divide National Monument. God bless you all. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you all for fighting for this. I really mean it.
Gentlemen, I sign this in your honor, in the honor of all the warriors you fought with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Says the title, Establishment of Camp Hale Continental Divide National Monument by the President of the United States of America, Proclamation. 